I'm David G here, Sheshnag Yoga Center, Sheshnag.com. This video is about yoga and how it is the science of the soul and how in the future, the near future, it will be appreciated as far, far more than an exercise. I say yoga is a little bit of a sneaky thing. Yoga has crept into the physically and emotionally and psychologically needy culture as a relaxation technique where the body can be put in certain positions to produce calm, the energetic experience of pranayama and the meditation techniques ultimately providing relaxation for the mind. With humans we have a tendency to grab onto it and like a bit like the confessional booth at a Catholic church where you go and live your normal life as neurotic as it is doing whatever you do good and bad stuff harmonious or inharmonious with the flow of life or against the flow of life and then once a fortnight or once a week you go to a yoga class and feel better for a little bit of a fix before you go back to your normal life but soon Yoga is going to be seen as the science of the soul. Because yoga, first of all, works. Works on a system. The subtle body. If you look right into yoga and the philosophy behind yoga, even the context of yoga, how did people like Sri Ramakrishna and other great beings he was in the last century. Lahiri Mahasya, 1800s man, or in the 1800s sort of gig, 19th century. Babaji comes to him. Babaji says, this is what the world needs. It'll take a while for it to infiltrate all of the world. So start now, because in the 22nd century, Maybe the 21st, because we're sort of in dire straits at the moment, aren't we? Yoga will be needed collectively throughout the world. So let's start dispersing it now and see how it goes. So people like great, great seers and yogis and such perception in the world on many levels have dispersed the yoga. Shivananda Saraswati of Rishikesh had an awesome guru who taught him yoga across a river in about 15 minutes. His whole life changed. Boom, he dispersed yoga fantastically to a lot of people. Had a few realized beings as disciples that actually perpetuated his cause and the desire for yoga to be known throughout the world. The good thing about yoga is it explains the goal of human existence, which is unification of the individual soul with the great soul. It works through a subtle body, which is infallible. Vibrationally, we are connected through that subtle body to everything. Inside the subtle body resonates the language that everyone's speaking the Sanskrit alphabet, the font of Devanagari, because they know that you can be a god through the vibrations of the Sanskrit alphabet. That's true, man. It's going to turn into an appreciation of yoga, not in the physical sense, not in the psychological or emotional sense. Yoga is going to be appreciated for its word, the title yoga the Sanskrit word that means union. People will get on board. Sanskrit will be the key 
on a vibrational level. The techniques all to do with yoga are tied in for the future transformation on this planet where we become aware that we are souls incarnate in a human vehicle. We are going to know that there are many dimensions of being that are around us simultaneously and spontaneously. The science of yoga will be appreciated as the precise techniques for each individual according to who they are, their own constitution, to be able to apply the techniques relative to them, which isn't necessarily the postures. Not everyone has to do postures to merge with the great being. It's not. There are different stages, different levels. Each soul is evolved subjectively to a certain degree in relation to self-awareness. I'm personally looking forward to the time that yoga gets appreciated as this. It is a science. That's why I've backed it. That's why I'm all in. I've got this weird, weird desire to understand how I'm connected to everything. The only technique that explains it precisely is yoga. The yoga sciences. The great seers have passed on this knowledge. It's made a come back and it's infinite in its capabilities and potentiality of what it can do to the human framework. In the next hundred years, endorsing yoga will allow humans to go from human to superhuman, from the physical and material identification of reality to a much vaster reality which is subtle by nature, the first dimension, the underlying substratum of all existence. That's where we're going. We're going to reverse the ploy of science. We're not going to go from the physical into the physical. We're going to go from the physical to the subtle because you know that the subtle is responsible for involution. It becomes more dense. The experience of being human becomes more dense as you come in from the very subtle existence to the most dense, to a solid experience of reality. During that lifetime, hopefully you and everyone else can endorse yoga according to who you are constitutionally. And no matter where yoga takes you, hopefully you can become more compassionate towards the earth, the nature, the plants, the animals, fellow humans. You get past your own value and belief system of what you hold to be true and get past all thoughts into your heart so you can share freely with another being, especially the ones you don't identify with or have no common ground to stand on. That's what yoga will bring about, compassion and the ability to spontaneously care and empathize for all pain as we go into this experience of we're all together man sitting on this spaceship called the earth we've got to look after the sucker don't let these fools that are in charge nuke us and create black holes and shit yoga's the way to go you can create your own black hole through yoga the nukes they got to go but that's not the point the point is Yoga works on a system, physiologically based, scientifically proven. Why do you think everyone can appreciate yoga? The answer is because it works. And there is a system and it's well defined. And don't go taking it out of context because there's been a lot of effort to maintain the sacredness of yoga. And in the end, it's all about evolution of consciousness unification of the soul with the great being. Om Namah Naga, Om Namah Shivaya, Hara Hara Mahadev. Please donate if you can. 
if you can't, that's cool. I just give my stuff away. But I'm hoping someone's going to like have excessive coin and go, yeah. I'm not hoping. I'm going to create it. But you might be the person. So I put this on the end of every video because just in case you're here, whack up some coin. I'll work out how you can tax deduct it. We're all good to go. Peace.